This man is uh, just back from the Cape where he was vacationing with his family. And uh, before we get started on our normal baseball and beer conversation with Jay Jaffe, let's get the Cape Cod review for 2021. You look refreshed. You look happy. You look like a new man. Is that what Cape Cod can do for you for a couple of weeks? Yeah, it's nice to get out of the city for, for a couple of weeks and get some uh, get, get a little bit more sleep, uh, a little bit more help with the child care. Uh, yeah, and, 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 some, and some great seafood. So yes, uh, uh, all those benefits are, are, uh, are, are, are showing up in, in, my, uh, in, in my current uh, aura. <laughs> good, good. Did you get a chance to bring some beer back from the Cape as well? You know, I didn't actually bring some. I had a fair, a fair bit up there. I had some good, uh, some good stuff. But um, uh, I think actually, there. I guess there were only a couple of beers that, we, that that I brought back, just cleaning out the fridge, and there was nothing remarkable. Just kind of the uh, uh, the le- the lesser stuff that I was drinking. But uh, um, a really good beer that I had up there called Fiddlehead IPA. I can't remember if I spoke about that on the show a couple of years, uh, a couple of weeks ago or not. But mm-hmm. uh, that was really good stuff. I think you did. I think one of your last reviews yeah. might have been Fiddlehead. So that's great. I think that's I think that's right. Excellent. As long as the weather cooperates for you, that's great because we're dealing with, we've been dealing with rain the last three or four days here and the temperatures have dropped about 20 degrees from where they used to be. So it's pretty crazy that the monsoon season has now finally hit this area and uh, we are are getting rain, which we haven't had all year. So, uh, I mean, for a lot of us that own homes with grass and plants and trees, we're pretty excited because Jay, it finally saves on uh, sprinkler costs. (laughs) <laughs> we're getting the heat wave here ourselves right now it's uh it, it's it's in the 90s and it's 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 been above 100 here uh in some spots i'm actually if, if it weren't for the fact that shohei otani is uh you know was pitching tonight at the uh at yankee stadium i'd probably be staying indoors here in the air conditioning well let's talk about otani since you're heading out to the bronx later to go watch that in person most of us believe that uh, what he's doing right now is incredible now remember he's finally healthy so he can pitch and dominate and also hit uh, th- these massive bombs like he's been doing all year long for the angels but this is what we envisioned when Otani's name started to leak that he'd be coming over to Major League Baseball from Japan. And, I mean, we started going back in time. You know, you got to go back to the Babe Ruth era to try to find somebody that w- that's able to d- do what Otani can do in both dominating on the mound and obviously uh, with his bat. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny looking back just how many people dismissed the possibility that he could do this because he had some some troubles in spring training uh, when he when he first came over. Uh, obviously he's, he's had some injury troubles. I mean, there were some big name, you know, big name people who stuck their neck out pretty early and declared this wasn't going to work. And, you know, for a while, it, obviously, um, at least with regards to the regularity of the two-way stuff, it, it, you know, it, it hasn't really worked, but this year, you know, they've taken the training wheels off and it's just been remarkable. I mean, uh, he's only sat out a few games. Uh, um, he's, you know, he's, he's hit for himself in games. Uh, he is uh, leading the majors in, in home runs right now with 28. He had two last night against the Yankees. Uh, when he takes the mound, he's, uh, uh, I wouldn't say quite ace quality, but uh, um, after some some rough early going, I think it was something like 19 walks in his first 18 two-thirds innings, uh, he's really leveled that out. And when he gets strike one, uh, he is just uh, dominant. I mean, he's tur- you know, the, the numbers on him, he's turning – uh, opposing batters into pitchers in, in, in terms of the quality of hitting once he gets uh, uh, if he gets that first pitch strike in there. I mean, you know, it, we just we're just not used to seeing anybody uh, excel on the, on both sides of the ball to this way. I mean, even Babe Ruth, you know, he was I think uh, um, he wasn't quite the Babe Ruth, you know, when 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 he was when he was in his transitional stage, he did set records for home runs, but yeah. he would become an even better hitter once he devoted himself full time. And it's just this is remarkable to see it. It's, you know, it's, it's the first time it's happened in over a century and, and we're lucky to get, to get to, to watch. Now he plays DH for the angels, but just, just for the sake of argument from an athletic standpoint, he could play the field if he needed to, right? Uh, DH is the safest he, he has, position. He has briefly. Yeah, he has briefly. He, I don't think he's taken a single uh, uh, defensive play, uh, you know, other than picking up a ball that was there that rolled him on a hit. Um, but yeah, I, you know, this is the, the reason he's DHing is, is out of self-preservation or out of, you know, pre- the effort to preserve him. He has made some cameos in, in, in right field. The Angels outfield is very depleted right now. They've been without Mike Trout. They'll be without Mike Trout until, the, until after the All-Star break. Uh, they just lost Justin Upton, which I wrote about uh, uh, earlier this week. He had, uh, he had started off the season very slowly and really kind of two very mediocre 
uh, uh, seasons himself, but then was heating up when he moved to the leadoff spot. So he's a big loss for them. Um, they lost extra Fowler to an ACL tear. Uh, it seemed at one point like it might be possible that he'd see some, uh, Otani would see some outfield time uh, between starts, but I think they're they're content to DH him and, and uh, uh, keeping keep the lineup. And so far, it's just, I mean, it could not have worked any better. Absolutely right. So you get to see Otani pitch tonight after he's been uh, dazzling with his bat so far in the stadium. What about another guy that's been even hotter than Otani, if you can even mention that? And that's Kyle Schwarber of the Washington Nationals, who has hit 16 home runs in 18 games in June. That is a uh, that's a historic pace he's on right now, Jay. It's a, it's insane. I mean, I you know I figured when when the Cubs non tendered him in the winter that this was the kind of thing that could come back to bite. Uh, come back to bite them because it's not like Schwarber uh, is, you know, is an, is an old guy. Um, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's, he's relatively young. He's got tremendous power. Um, you know, he's had some injuries. He's had some, some, uh, uh, some ups and downs, but uh, I mean, it seemed like, you know, it seemed silly for the Cubs not to take a chance on him, on, on him rebounding. And um, the nationals did, and, and boy, he's been everything you could have asked for and more. And right now he's just in the groove. And the fact that, the only comp comparisons for for what he's done are uh, Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa from the steroid era in terms of uh, uh, the home runs in a sh in a short amount of time. I'm blanking on exactly what the what the what the parameters are. It's just ridiculous. But um, that he's doing it at a time when you know we're in, in the midst of an offensive downturn uh, is just remarkable. I wonder also if uh, he's putting himself in great position to be traded at the deadline, along with Max Scherzer, if the Nats decide to be sellers this year and, and realize that based on their salary structure, in order to keep guys like Trey Turner uh, for long-term contracts, they're going to have to move some of these names out. Yeah, I don't, you know, the Nationals have, have, have really, for the most part, resisted going that route um, in the past. And, you know, they've kind of alternated good years and bad years. Um, you know, uh, for, for much of the past decade. Um, the biggest name, obviously, if they wanted to deal him would be Max Scherzer and Scott Boris says that he'll have to agree to an extension uh, if, if he's going to be moved, which given that he's got a 10 and five rights in place means, uh, you know, he, he co totally controls that game. Schwarber, I guess, yeah, he's probably a guy who, who, could be, uh, uh, who could be moved at the deadline. I think the Nationals might, you know, might be inclined to say, hey, you know, if you want to move, you know, we'll, we'll move you. But if you want to stick around, we're more than happy to talk around, talk about uh, uh, an extension. But, uh, you know, he quite rightfully might uh, want to explore his value on the open market, too. I think the problem with Washington right now is they're locked into big, bad contracts with names right. like Patrick Corbin and also uh, Steven Strasburg. And it's right. putting a strain on that payroll, which ultimately could force them to be sellers. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, this is the way they've run things. It's a very stars and scrubs type uh, roster, as we used to call it, a baseball prospectus. Uh, not unlike what the Angels do. I mean, they've got, you know, the huge marquee names, uh, uh, including the recently jettisoned Albert Pujols. Uh, and, uh, you know, at times it feels like they're sort of skimping at the corners uh, of, of their roster as, as well. But, yeah, the Nationals have some tough choices coming up, especially, you know, with this transition here with, uh, with Scherzer's contract expiring. I agree with you. We're talking with Jay Jaffe right now from Fangraphs.com as uh, we continue here on Sports Talk. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to really dive into the Futures game or not, but the roster has finally been released. We're going to get to see some of the best prospects of the game competing in this uh, coming up next month. And, and I'm excited about it, Jay. We lost a whole year of minor league baseball last season, and now we finally get that back with the Futures game. Yeah, it's cool. I, I actually haven't really had a chance to look at the rosters, but, you know, getting a chance to see – all those prospects in one place on the big stage is uh, uh, an opportunity that all, you know, all baseball fans uh, uh, should take, uh, you know, when, when it's on TV. It's fun because, um, you know, instead of having uh, uh, your usual hosts, uh, uh, you know, who are kind of cribbing from, from, from the, from the uh, prospect experts, you've got the prospect experts on TV uh, for that game. And I'm not sure who it will be this year, but it's usually – uh, some pretty smart guys who know their way around these players and they can tell you their strengths and weaknesses and, you know, what the chances are of them uh, uh, developing in, into the types of players that, uh, that others envision. We're back right now with uh, Jay Jaffe from Fangraphs.com as uh, we continue our conversation around the game and also get you ready for our beer pick of the week, which will be Jay's choice at the end of uh, this segment. Uh, tough blow for the Dodgers last night. We hear now that Trevor Bauer, one of their aces, is facing allegations of assault. 
this is a developing story. But if the Dodgers end up losing Bauer for a period of time, uh, that rotation that's been so good and so deep suddenly would take a, a major hit. And you got to wonder the kind of effect that could have on the Dodgers as uh, that race in the uh, NL West has really been one of the more entertaining uh, races we've seen thus far, Jay. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, the the effect on the Dodgers is secondary. I mean, I hope that whatever's going on gets, you know, appropriate uh, uh, investigation and, and and punishment. I mean, for the Dodgers, they built themselves to to uh, uh, to withstand all kinds of pitching injuries. Unfortunately, they lost Dustin May uh, to Tommy John surgery. That was their kind of their their biggest, uh, um, uh, you know, b- uh, bat bit of insurance there. Uh, Tony Gonsolin has come back. He's not really stretched out. Uh, but uh, his results have kind of improved in in in, uh, in his recent starts, and I think there's hope that that uh, uh, that he'll be available. They've got to manage the workloads of Julio Urias and, and, and Clayton Kershaw himself, um, but uh, they're starting to play very good baseball right now. Uh, the lead uh, uh, in the division after beating the Giants in back-to-back games is just a game and a half. Um, you know, things have come together for them. They had a soft patch of the schedule that they kind of flubbed a little bit, but. Uh, um, they've, they've gotten back on track after being no hit, uh, uh, last, last week by the Cubs. Uh, they won, uh, three straight there plus two, uh, two more against the giants. And, and, uh, um, you know, they've taken advantage of the fact that the Padres have, have, uh, have had all kinds of injuries and haven't really, uh, entirely be, be, been able to capitalize on, on, uh, uh, on the Dodgers, uh, and giants occasional misfortunes. So, um, I, you know, I think, uh, all things considered the Dodgers are, are, are in reasonably good shape. You know, you look at the, the Padres, I'm happy you mentioned them. They've won nine of their last 10, and that's what's kept them in this race. Just three back of the Giants starting today with the Dodgers a game and a half back. And uh, it, it's fun. I mean, this is the division that we talked about at the beginning of the year. We love those Padres-Dodgers games. And then quietly, the Giants just went into first place. They haven't uh, let up. And, you know, that's really been one of the great stories of Major League Baseball here in this first half. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've said it before, but the Giants, the, what the job that, that Farhan Zaidi has done since coming over and in, in hitting on so many reclamation projects, such as Mike Yastrzemski and Donovan Solano uh, and, and Kevin Gosman and uh, um, uh, really just, you know, Im- impressive work there. And uh, they've gotten some, some good rebounds from guys like uh, Buster Posey and Brandon Belt. Unfortunately, Belt's injured right now. Uh, so is Evan Longoria, another guy who's really rebounded. Um, we'll see if they can withstand all these injuries. Jastrzemski's hurt right now. He fouled a ball off his leg, which looked excruciating uh, in that, uh, that, that, that uh, the other day. Um, but, uh, you know, looks like we could have a, a real three-team race there. And uh, uh, everybody thought that the NL East was going to be the division that, that uh, um, you know, that, that was the most hard fought. But uh, that, there's only one team above 500 there, the Mets. Um, you know, as we said, the Nationals are struggling and, and so, so are the Braves and everybody else in that division. Um, but uh, the NL West is the top of that is just a lot of fun. Every division is close right now. Really, the NL Central is probably the race that at least uh, the Brewers have separated themselves a, a little bit from the pack. But even that race uh, starting today was a five game lead. So it's nice to know that as we're heading into this uh, month of July in the All Star break, all six divisions right now are real tight. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the AL East is uh, uh, hasn't turned out exactly the way we expected, with you know, with the Red Sox on top and the and the Yankees kind of languishing. Um, but uh, yeah, we've 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 got. Uh, we, I think we're going to have some some interesting races here. Um, you know, the the effects <laughs> the effects of uh, the the uh, crackdown on on the sticky stuff, I think, are are really going to reshape how we how we view some of these races because it seems like right now it seems like everything is up for grabs pitching wise and you know a lot of the you know a lot of the top pitchers are just not uh, uh not quite as dominant as they were before the crackdown and uh, um you know i think uh, uh every team is trying to reevaluate what it thinks it knows about uh, its own needs Look, you've got some guys that aren't necessarily dominant, but I'll just take Garrett Richards, for example, of the Boston Red Sox, who are in first place. He said that he has to reinvent his entire pitching style that he's had for the last nine and a half years as a result of the crackdown. And I think that a lot of guys are probably in a similar situation to where they're seeing now their RPMs go down. They have to figure out how they're going to uh, effectively pitch the rest of this season. And even if the strikeouts go down, Jay, they want to make sure that their control is still where it needs to be and they can still keep their spots in the rotation and win games 
Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, this is, it's, it's an aspect that kind of touches everything as far as the game goes. I mean, you're, you're for the pitcher, it's, it's, uh, uh, it starts with the, you know, the, the mechanics of how they hold the ball uh, and, and how they get their grips. I mean, you know, pe- a lot of people didn't have much sympathy for Tyler Glasnow when he, when he, when he made his comments a couple weeks ago after, uh, you know, uh, tearing up, uh, uh, spraining his UCL and, 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 uh, and his flexor tendon. Um, but you, you think about the way to hold the baseball and the way that uh, uh, those muscles on the forearm get recruited, uh, you know, the, when you move your fingers around and, and you can understand that, you know, frustration, um, you know, when a guy has to switch grips mid season and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's tough to do that on the fly. I know he's not the only one uh, th- that's dealing with that. Um, you know, you've got to think about uh, uh, pitch sequences. Uh, you got to think about, you know, how the extent to which the ball is going to carry. I mean, um, you know, a lot of guys have, have been, uh, um, especially this year, able to get away with a lot more pitches in the air uh, because the ball isn't carrying quite as much. And uh, um, now, you know, you might might be neutralizing that somewhat, especially because you can't get that fastball upstairs to, to spin like it used to. It's uh, it, it's it could be, a, you know, a pretty uh, a pretty big change here. Again, you can follow already seeing it. Absolutely. Follow Jay on Twitter at Jay underscore Jaffe. Check out his work at Fangraphs.com. And if you want to learn about what beers Jay drinks, you can check him out at Untapped, that great beer app. Let's get your beer pick of the week. Uh, what would you like to uh, wrap, it, uh, wrap it up with this week, Jay? Okay, this one's a fun one here. This is uh, uh, Threes Brewing's public property. Uh, it's primarily served at their Governor's Island outpost, which is open on the weekends. Uh, Governor's Island's a little island, uh, about a five or ten minute ferry ride off of uh, uh, the lower tip of Manhattan and and uh, uh, our area of Brooklyn. Uh, it's basically a giant public park that has uh, some some old uh, 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 civil and uh, uh, revolutionary war related related uh, um, history to it. Um, public property. It's uh, you know it, it's about that. It's not only about the fact that uh, uh, this land is uh, for the public use, but the hops that they use are all public uh, publicly grown hops. They're not the proprietary ones that. Uh, um, you know, they're, they're the fancy headliners. These are uh, Cascade, Chinook, Comet, and Cashmere. Uh, and it makes for a really nice uh, fruity, but uh, uh, fruity beer that's not, not, not too fruity. Um, I, think it's, I think it's just a, a, very, a very good uh, quencher for a hot day. Uh, if I wasn't headed up to the ballpark, I'd be looking forward to having one of these uh, this evening. All right. Great job as always. Enjoy the park tonight. I'll look forward to getting uh, your report on Shohei on next week's radio hit. And thanks again uh, for the time and, and, and the uh, great analysis, Jay. All right. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Take care.